Hi everyone, in this video we will discuss the mandibular permanent second molar. So the mandibular permanent second molar, these teeth, they assist the first molar in function. These permanent molars emerge into the oral cavity at the, at the age of 11 to 13 years and the root completion is at the age of 14 to 15 years. These are the individual models of the permanent mandibular second molar. So these teeth, they have, this one is the right mandibular second molar and this is the left mandibular second molar. The crown has four well-developed cusps. One, two, three, four. Two of them are the buccal cusp and two are the lingual cusp. The tooth has two well-developed roots. The one that will be on the mesial side will be known as the mesial root and the one on the distal side is known as the distal root. This is the buccal aspect. From the buccal aspect, you can see this is the mesiobuccal cusp, the larger one, and this one is the distobuccal cusp, the smaller one. In between the mesiobuccal and the distobuccal cusp, you can see a developmental groove, also known as the buccal developmental groove. The cervical line is straight, but at the point of bifurcation, it forms a sharp dip. The roots are shorter and they are closer to each other if you compare it with the mandibular first molar. The roots are inclined in a distal direction. This is the lingual aspect. This one, the larger cusp is the mesiolingual cusp and the smaller is the distolingual cusp. You can see because the crown and the root converge on the lingual side, you can see some part of the distal aspect and some part of the mesial aspect from the lingual aspect. This is the root, these are the roots, the mesial root and the distal root. This is a mesial aspect. So you can see the buccal surface is more convex as compared to the lingual surface. This is the mesiobuccal cusp, this is the mesiolingual cusp, and this one is the mesial marginal ridge. The cervical line has little curvature towards the occlusal surface, and the root is smooth. And the root is smooth. This one is the mesial root. Distal aspect, you can see this is the buccal aspect, the more convex one, and this is the lingual aspect. This one is the distobuccal cusp. And this one is the distolingual cusp. Because the distobuccal and the distolingual cusps are smaller as compared to the mesial cusps. So you can see some part of the occlusal aspect from the distal aspect. This one is the distal marginal ridge. Here the cervical line is more straight if you compare it with the cervical line of the mesial aspect. You can see also some part of the root of the mesial root from the distal aspect. So this one is the distal root. From the occlusal aspect you can see the two mesial cusps are larger as compared to the two distal cusps. The buccal and the lingual developmental grooves they join they meet the central developmental groove at the point of central pit. This one is the central developmental groove. So these two grooves with the central developmental groove form a cross or a plus shape pattern. There are many supplemental grooves that are radiating from these developmental grooves. The occlusal aspect is more rectangular in shape. You can also see this, these fossa. This is the mesial triangular fossa and this small fossa is the distal triangular fossa.